Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. So I've got this Pioneer um, amplifier um, CD player in repair and the model number is a XHM21. Um, now the customer says it's working but the display on the front's gone off so it should be a pretty simple repair. Um, but the first thing you'll notice about this, it's very very light and it feels very cheap and not very good quality even though it says pioneer on the front uh, now i've had a look the display on there it appears to be the 30 volt rail to the display missing and if we trace this wire back it comes straight from the power supply um, so it's obviously the 30 volt rail must come from the power supply so the first thing we need to do is uh, find a service manual for this that's uh, that's all we really need to find the problem on it Right, so I've found the service manual on the internet and I've downloaded it. And uh, if we scroll through here, um, it all looks very impressive. We've got details of modifications, uh, PCB layouts, um, connection diagrams, block diagrams. And this all looks, uh, these fault finding charts, it tells you how to... Uh, it tells you what waveforms to look for, it tells you how to check the laser. Um, it all looks very, very impressive until you realise when you scroll down here, um, there's no actual circuit diagram in the manual. So what a waste of time that is. Putting all this lot on tells you how to enter the service mode. Uh, exploded views there with all the different bits and pieces listed. Uh, but go down to the bottom See these pictures of the boards, but there's no actual schematic diagram whatsoever So uh, we're just gonna have to this is going to be a matter of playing it by ear and pressing and guessing now Right so the 30 volt that's missing on the board it should be there and it's I've only got 0.3 uh, and if we go over here and measure over here, we do have 29.59 volts there. Um, so the power supply is generating the 30 volts, but it's not getting from there to there. So I, I presume it goes through some sort of switching circuit. We'll have to stop the camera and have a quick look. Right, so I think I see what the problem is now. Now, I've just drawn this very, very rough diagram. Don't take too much notice of this because I really haven't got time to reverse engineer and draw all the diagram down. Um, but it seems like we've got a transistor here. Um, that seems to be connected to the power online because when I press the button on the front, um, the base of this rises from zero to one volt. So you would imagine when that's got one volt on the base it to be fully saturated and it to pull this base down to ground through that transistor well what i find is um i've got zero or one here depending on whether the power button's pressed or not but the collector remains the same whether the base is high or not so i would imagine this transistor's faulty uh, now this is where we're going to run into some trouble because let's just unplug it uh, it's that one there and it's surface mounted so what we're going to have to do is take it out and uh, get it into an adapter and see if we can test it I'll, I'll give you the component numbers in a minute when we get it out and make sure it is, that is the problem right so that's the transistor in question the board reference is Q704 it's a SOT23 surface mounted component. I've cleaned the top so I can read the number and it reads DAGP. Uh, now, if we had the service manual for this, that'd be simple. We could just look up what it is. Um, but um, I have no idea what this is. So the first thing we're going to do, and this will help simplify things, um, there's one or two surface mounted transistors on this power supply. We're going to have a look at all the other ones and see if there's another identical one that's got them letters on uh, that we could possibly take out and make some measurements on 
um, but I might just have a quick look in my surface mount semiconductor book first and just see if that comes up with anything right so that's uh, that's no help anyway um, there's nothing in there that's DAGP um, so what I'll do is I'll take it out first and we'll run a test on it right now that's very interesting I've got it in this uh, adapter uh, and the peak tester actually says it's working yeah it's come up with MPN Darlington transistor uh, which I find very very strange because if it's got a base voltage that the collector doesn't pull down I'm wondering if um, something's happened to it when we've desoldered it with a soldering iron um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it back in again and see what happens no actually I've just had another thought it's a Darlington transistor and it only has a, a gain of 251 uh, that seems something wrong with that so what I'm going to have, have a look on this board and see if there's another one that's marked DAGP and we'll take that out and um, if there's one in there we'll take that out and try that as well first otherwise it's over to the internet and see if we can get some data on it because it doesn't come up in my data book right well that was very lucky I found another one here right at the front of the board near the power connector and it's got exactly the same numbers on the top DAGP uh, so I'm going to remove that and then we'll make some tests on that and, and see what that reads right so that's the other one out um, you can just see it there in the test adapter let's close the lid and see what we've got Let's see if we can get that out of the light. Right, now that's interesting. This says it's an NPN transistor, just a single transistor with a HFE of 225. Um, so clearly, this one that pretends to be a Darlington with a gain of 251. Uh, that's clearly got something going on wrong with it um, but with no circuit diagram we're going to have to revert to the internet now and just run a search on that and see what we can come up with um, because I would imagine the one that says it's a Darlington is the one that's faulty right so nothing at all comes up on the internet um, so this is where guesswork takes over now Right, so I'm just double checking my work first. Uh, that's the one that I presume is working. Um, I'll just go and retest that one again first. Right, well, I've tested them both. I've got exactly the same result as I had the first time. Let's get that out of the light. Um, it's got to be faulty. It cannot be a Darlington transistor uh, with a gain of only 252. There's got to be something wrong with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back in um, and then we'll just uh, we'll just have a bit of a guess. Right, so this is how we guess out what the transistor is. We know for sure by looking at the other one, it's MPN. Uh, now in the circuit, the emitter is connected to earth uh, and the collector is connected through a 1K resistor to a 30 volt supply. Um, so... Um, if we work out the maximum transistor current is going to be 30 milliamps through that resistor straight down to earth um, so what we need is a transistor of more than 30 milliamps and more than 30 volts which is MPN with um, a fairly lowish gain right so using my equivalent book i've settled on this as a part that could very well be suitable a bc846 uh, maximum collector current of 100 milliamp uh, which is fine because we're not going to be passing more than 30 milliamps uh, and 65 volt uh, which is more or less double the supply rail what we've got so i think a bc846 is going to be absolutely fine Right, so that's the BC846, uh, and we've got a HFE, again, of 236, 
which is very very close um, to the transistor that we took out that seems to be working all right so let's get that fitted in and see what happens right so that's the new transistor in there um, let's plug it in and uh, switch on see what happens I'll just set the camera up on a tripod right here we go let's plug it in yeah there we go displays back on right so all's left to do now is to uh, just give it a quick soak test professor of economics at the london school of economics to find out so there we go guys and girls a little bit of know-how a little bit of guesswork and uh, we're back up and running again and uh, if there was a circuit in the uh, service manual this would have been such an easy fault but uh, we actually got there in the end all right guys and girls i'll catch you in the next video many thanks for watching goodbye